You know, there's a, there's, a, there's a story when you give a Roosevelt a microphone, you know, sit still because it's going to be a long evening. Uh, on the other hand, though, my grandfather was very famous for one remark he made after one of his speeches to Congress when he said his best advice he would give speakers was to be brief, sit down, be quiet. I'm going to ignore a little bit of that and just say thank you for welcoming me here, but also to be at the first annual Franklin D. Roosevelt Disability Dinner. And I'm, I'm honored to be part of the transition to this name, and, and I think if, if my grandparents were here, I think if my grandmother Eleanor were here, she'd actually be outside with the Occupy, Occupy Wall Street crowd. <laughs> so, I, 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 want, I want to thank in particular, though, Harvey, Harvey Safferstein called me up one day and said, um, you don't know who I am, but uh, your friend Wendy Gruel, our next mayor, said that you ought, to, you ought to talk to me, so I want to ask you a few questions, and would you be willing to participate in this wonderful event? And after he explained it to me, I said, I'm there. Not a problem. You saw a reference earlier in the video, and I, and I am an educator. I'm involved in an organization in an area that some of you may have heard of. It's called Pacoima in San Fernando, in the northeast San Fernando Valley. And I work with roughly... Um, 20,000 students in the public school system. And most of the students I work with fall way below the, the federal poverty level. Many of them come to school with many, many deficits that they have to overcome. But my small organization, Project Grad, helps them realize their dreams and go to college. And we give them a little stipend along the way. And they graduate from college. And I'm fortunate enough to have hired some back that work for me. So we're very lucky that we do that. But there's a challenge coming our way that I like to think my grandfather would be here telling you about if he were with us today. And that is that the school district right now, LA Unified, which has 680,000 students in it, has over 82,000 students that are classified with a disability of one kind or another, a physical, learning, and so on. And there are roughly 11,500 teachers, aides, and staff to assist those children in learning and moving forward in, in their education. That's all about to change when the school district starts cutting. And often the first people that are cut are teachers that work with students that have high needs like this. That burden, if you can call it that, when those, when those teachers leave the classrooms, those students who depend so much on those teachers are going to be left without that leadership in, in their lives. And that's going to come to us in Los Angeles. So we need to really look hard at how we support our children in schools, and in particular, what we can do for children with special needs. It's up to us, if we're members of this organization, to step forward, to step up and say, I will make a difference. I will mentor. I will work in schools. I will do things to help students achieve their dreams, because the coming cuts for the public school system in Los Angeles are going to affect all of us. And I ask all of you to join hands and join the other people in the room and go out and help make a difference in a child's life. I think it's incumbent upon all of us because we're here, because we care so much about change in the world today. My, and last, I want to say something about my grandfather, of course. Eleanor was asked shortly after FDR passed away if, um, if she felt that polio had made a difference in his life and made a difference in his role as president. And she paused and said, no, it didn't. What it did, though, was to make him a better person in his life. And because of that, we have now the legacy of my grandfather, who, in case you didn't know, it's kind of an interesting fact. There are over 95,000 photographs of FDR, and there are only two pictures of him sitting in a wheelchair. In his time, he hid that. He hid that with a passion. Right or wrong, that was his choice at the time, but now he has become a symbol and a hero. As the statue on the program indicates, he is somebody that we all should look to. We all should look to his leadership, and I certainly wish he were around today to help a little bit. But I think that we have somebody in, in FDR and that this dinner is named after him that we can all look to, I hope, with pride and aspiration that we could all pick up a little bit and lead like people like FDR. So thank you for letting me be part of this. I think it's a wonderful event and an honor to be here. There are wonderful people I've met already, and I look forward to meeting more. So thank you very much.